Okay, hear me out, hear me out. If you want to be a hoe, be a hoe. But be a hoe with somebody else that wants to be a hoe. Stop trying to be a hoe with somebody who wants to be committed. Stop trying to be a hoe when someone wants to be loyal. Stop trying to be a hoe when somebody just wants consistent love and affection. Don't get me wrong, it's okay to like not want to be in a committed relationship. It's okay to just want to date around a little bit. But do that with people who want to match the same energy. Stop doing that with people who want long, lasting, committed, loving, loyal energy. All you're doing is making the loyal people, the good people who really want like good relationships and long lasting relationships think that they don't exist. All because you want to change up who you want to talk to and who you want to mess with every day. Keep that consistent with the people who want that and leave the people who want commitment alone. And y'all wonder why this generation is so messed up with relationships. as my guest host. Um, tonight's episode is going to be fun. <laughs> we just did for the episode to be fun. I know that this past week's episode uh, was fun, but it was really, really, um, I think it was probably scary to some because we were talking about COVID-19 and talking about the truth of COVID-19 and what happens mm-hmm. to the body, like if you're not you and X, Y, and Z. So we wanted to get back into, you know, getting with some topics that are still popping. And we're going to talk about entanglement, yes, relationships, <laughs> and singleness. Uh, I'm going to show you all my shirt and then I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to let Tiffany introduce herself to her, which, tell you all where she knows me from and give a little background about herself. But my shirt reads, oh my, where did that go? What just happened? Can y'all see me? I see you. <laughs> Where did it go? Like my whole thing just, and y'all can see me, so don't Burgess technical difficulty. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> there it goes. I want to see my shirt. My shirt says, "We." I'm gonna let Tiffany tell y'all what the shirt says. We sit on faces, not in our feelings. Boom. It's just a little key key, that's all. But it's the truth about us not sitting in our feelings. Like, okay, don't have time. All right, I'm gonna let Tiffany before we get started. So, hi everyone, my name is Tiffany. I know Miss Akila from we used to work together, like, we were teachers. She's about their life, obviously, I'm not. Um, I taught the business side in in the high school that I graduated from, Cahoma County High School. Um, I also know Akila because we are swag family. You know, she's all corn, she's an alkanite, and I am a Delta Devil. Um, so it's just been real good, you know, building a friendship with her, you know, being able to work with her, but also see other sides of her. So yeah so right now i'm in nashville um but i'm a first this is my first time on a podcast and i'm so excited like i'm so excited may end up getting me one myself but that's another story for another time oh i ain't nothing wrong with starting one girl it's easy breezy gives you something to look forward to and hopefully like you picked up so um, so tonight we're going to be talking about entanglements and relationships. And if y'all know about entanglements, it just like became this big word when Jada Pickett Smith used it to describe her relationship with August Alcina. Um, like most people, right, Will didn't want her to use entanglement. Will wanted <laughs> her to call it. <laughs> Will was like mm-hmm. an entanglement. <laughs> and it's funny, I'm going to say what I got to say about Will, but I'm going to wait because mm-hmm. okay. it's crazy. So I'm going to jot that down for that as a note because I got to come back to that. 
So Will didn't want her to stay in family. He wanted her to stay in a relationship, right? And I, I, I think uh, per what Tiffany just said, we're going to get a little bit more deeper into Will's reaction and what he said there. But uh, I remember a friend of mine posting, um, she used the word entanglement, talking about how she used it correctly, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I was like, well, yeah, I know what an entanglement is too. But I also understood where Will was coming from. I understood his purpose of like pushing her to say relationship versus entanglement. Because the entanglement, the definition is a complicated or compromising relationship or situation, right? I don't think when she was in it, that it was an entanglement. Because Will said they had decided to separate. go their separate way. Right? right. Will said that they had decided to call it, you know, we done. But right. for her, I feel like she utilized entanglement. And I'm not, I ain't picking sides. I ain't on nobody's side here. I feel like she <laughs> used the word entanglement after the fact. Right? right? This was like an after the fact thing. Like, oh, you know, like, yeah, we were working together, but now that I'm back with my husband, this was just something complicated that we did. Like, you know, like, we got together. He was my side buddy when it wasn't that. He was your man, and you were just still married. Well, what do you think about the use of entanglement versus the word relationship? Ooh, so I kind of agree with you. Um, Entanglement is, you know, something that's complicated. Um, it may be something that just happens versus re in a relationship. Like, you know, that's that's your boo, that's your bae, that's who you're trying to hopefully build with. Um, so it's like, and it's crazy because she wasn't trying to build with August at all, you know. At that point in time, people keep saying, oh, well, Jada was rocking a cradle and this and this and that. But clearly they said they were broken up because Will was pretty much, he had washed his hands of her. Like, he was done. So, like, that's just crazy. Entanglement is, like, it's complicated. Like, it's like Facebook. Facebook need to move is complicated to I'm a, I'm in an entanglement because that is something that can't be explained. It's like it's there. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I ever been in an in, in an entanglement. Ooh. <laughs> I think like after I broke up with the ex, and then they was messing with somebody else. And I, I did Lord Jesus. So first off, let me say this, uh Virgil. <laughs> Uh, and Tiffany, I hope I, I can. If, uh, um, I'm not trying to speak for you, but I hope this goes for you. We started off the show by saying, like, we don't sit in our feelings. So, no, I'm not in my feelings. I am nowhere near bitter. I am so much better. God is so good. Uh, life is so well. But I am going to speak on the shit that was the shit when it was the shit. Uh, so, I can remember breaking up with a guy, uh, like us breaking up, like it was a mutual thing, fucking off, whatever. And then. He was with somebody. The person he was with was who he cheated on me with. So I was like, I'm gonna start fucking with him. Cause he was with me. You shouldn't have been messing with him. Right. <laughs> like, like that was that was my mentality. I was so young. I was like 19. And and, and my thing is like even even now, and there's no judgment, because I mean, pretty much everybody like, oh my God, I've never been in an entang entanglement. Yes, you have. Like everyone has, because either you was the main chick. Or you yeah. was the side chick. And the side chick or the side boo is an entanglement. Because yeah. it's something going on in that person's relationship that they're not getting, that they're, they're gonna get from somewhere else. Clear point. Jada says she feel like she wasn't loved anymore. She wasn't getting that affection and that attention. Am I saying it's right? No. What I am saying is though, Everyone has been in an entanglement, whether you want to admit to it or not. Whether you was the side, whether you was the main chick and your boo wasn't doing right, you was like, oh, I'm gonna go out here and get me an August Alcina, but I'm still gonna ride for my man. Or you could have been the side dude. And, you know, or you could have been the side boo and stuff wasn't going right with him and his relationship. And he was like, okay, I'm not looking for no relationship with you. 
this is what it is. people don't want to so i ain't hyping up side chicks that's something that i did like when i and I, and I ain't knocking them either do what you do right. the choice is yours <laughs> that's right. at the end of the day, all of the stuff that comes with whatever you have to live with like i wasn't cool with the you know the up the sometime in this the sometime in that that wasn't for me that ain't you know i, I wasn't cut from that cloth the cloth that i was cut from is that you with me whenever right something Right. So I could be, I can, I could not be in that, you know. And I, I'm not a, I have it bad with sharing me. Like I can share my dad, I can share my brothers, I share Jesus, but <laughs> not just God, not Jesus. I, you know, I share them. But I'm not finna share nobody I'm dating. Like what, what, what we share for what? For what? Right. We supposed to be. I feel like where she got lost in that was that she, when she wasn't feeling good anymore, when they decided to stop fighting for each other, that's when she got lost, right? And I think that's yeah. a lot of people's problem. They refuse to fight because either you want your cake and, and we want to eat it too, or you just like, fuck it, I'm just, I'm not gonna deal with it, I'm gonna do what I want to do. Right. <clears throat> so and I think that's really what she wound up doing with August. August was a candidate. Yeah, and I think, war. I think, and, and back, piggybacking off what you said, um, when she said she didn't fight, she felt like she lost herself. I feel like, you know, we as women, we pour so much into our relationship that sometimes we do lose ourselves. And, you know, after the fact, like, he's not showing me that attention or I'm not feeling that love, then you, you're you like, okay, where, did that, where, does, where does that leave me? Who am I now? Because I've poured so much into him. And that's not necessarily saying it was, you know, not necessarily saying for women, but men pour into women too, that they they lose themselves. What I'm saying is if a person pours in so into a person so much, then when that person stops giving them what they expect to build them up, they don't know who they are. So therefore you have to find a whole nother person or look for that person that makes you feel that way. No, because like what I realized I is that them. I needed to, I needed to like step away from the from whatever situation. I've been single for a minute, and for me, it's been all about being okay, loving on Keila, developing Keila, pushing Keila. Because at the end of the day, I gotta be whole when I come to you. Because if you're pouring in me to fill me up, then you're emptying yourself, and that's gonna make you feel cool. That's gonna fuck up whatever we got going on. We're not right. gonna make be trying to make sure that I'm cool, and it should be that we're doing something to build together. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And that's what I tell a lot of my friends. Like I have a lot of friends that I tell them, like we're not the same as we were when we were in our twenties. You know, we were looking at, oh, I'm living life and I'm, you know, this and this and that. And you're learning yourself when you're 20. But ha what But what happens when you're in your 30s? That's a whole, it, a new age requires new levels. And you learn something about yourself in your 30s. And my friends, I always tell, and I, let me stay for the record, I'm single too. But I'm okay with being single because I know who I am. I know what I can pour into myself, but I can also pour into them without losing myself. And I think that's what a so. lot of times do in our 20s. We're like so busy because we're just getting into life. We're, we're living fast. We're seeing so many different things. Oh, I want to, but I, I had in my head that, oh, I was going to do X, Y, and Z with this person and blah, blah, blah. And I did nothing with nobody. And it wasn't, yeah, we did, you know, maybe it was a, a crazy relationship or whatever, but at the same token, we, we cared about each other, right? right. So like, I learned from that particular situation, and now in my 30s, what I've come to find, and I want you to tell me if you feel this way. So I was watching an Amanda Sales interview last weekend, last Saturday. Okay. And like, I've been, since I started my business and like been doing all this different stuff, like my friends, when I say like, all y'all, y'all be like, texting me like oh Keila great job I'm so proud of you you know I'm excited you inspiring me my god sister come out here she want to throw a party she want to go out to eat like you doing this you know everything like everybody is so supportive right <clears throat> and probably maybe late February 
I started feeling this like need. Uh, me and my my guys, one of my guys were talking. I was like, man, like I just, I was like, I ain't being mean because I love y'all, but sometimes I be wanting somebody to come home to to talk to about that. And I was like, but I feel weird saying this. This to me, I told I said I feel weird saying this because I feel like it makes me weak, and I don't want to be weak. You know, that's not uh, that's not a part of the key look. So when I was watching Amanda Sell's uh, interview, she was talking about how she had last March had a mental breakdown, and she was talking about like how part of her struggle was that when she was younger she had been because of her circumstances she had been forced to be a strong independent young intelligent black woman right and because of that it was always it's on my shoulder i got it i ain't gonna take it off and i was like shit this is me she's correct and she's like but now i just want somebody to hold me at night or tell me hey you ain't gotta do it i got it and i was like that's what i'm feeling like i want somebody to say now i'm please like you just said i'm fine with being single Right, but I think at this particular age, I'm like developing these ideas or these thoughts or these wants where I'm like, maybe I could date somebody. I ain't gonna be fucked up if I don't date nobody, but it would be nice <laughs> to have somebody. You right. know, like somebody to say like, hey, but again, I ain't fucked up cause I ain't got nobody, but it would be nice. And I was like, oh, why am I feeling these things? And then after I listened to her interview, I was like, wow, like she's right. Like because of my circumstances as a kid, the things that I saw, the things that I went through, I forced myself to be extremely independent, which made so many people like either intimidated or they, they wanted to step back from me because they were right. like, well, oh, she don't do da 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 or whatever. When in actuality, it was, no, I've been through X, Y, and Z. I've been so many different things. Uh, homeless, didn't have clothes, didn't have X, Y, or Z. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm fighting to make sure I'm not a statistic or that I don't fall back into those things that I did not enjoy when I was a child, right? And I right. spent all of my 20s fighting that. Now in my late 30s, I'm like, huh, like, I, um, do I want somebody? But it could just be nice to have somebody to call and talk to. This. That's what it is. You know, that's what I'm saying to myself now, but have you found yourself in that somewhere along that line I, or in those feelings? I have. And um, you know, like like you said, you are around friends and they be like, oh, I'm going home to Bay and boo and this, this, and that. But sometimes I have to step out the box and I'll be like, okay, society has you thinking that, okay, at a certain age, it's okay to, you know, as as us being black women, we, we're from the same Kahoma County area. So, you know, we came from pretty much sticks and rocks, you know, yeah. and when our parents was 35 and 36, we thought they was like much older because they had their stuff together. So we like, okay, yeah, you know, and your mom taught you to be independent just like my mom did. But at the same time, society has messed a lot of us up when it comes to um, what, what age should we have somebody to do this? And what age should we have somebody to do that? And what, you know, a man or a woman's body is supposed to look like? X, Y, and Z. Um, but I I think a lot of that has to do with society just telling you like, when is a good time to be settled down and, you know, being with someone. And true enough, I would love to have someone to come home to and talk to. But let's be real. It ain't the best pickings out there because men be with some bullshit. Let's just put it out there, like, the older we get, we were like, okay, if we get any, you know, the older we get, okay, I can find somebody my age, he looking for stability, he's looking to build, and here he is just up here trying to get a piece of ass, and I'm up here, you know, coming home, you know, I just, like, I just want to come home and sit down and talk, and then first thing you know, what you got on? Nigga, I don't want to talk about that, I want to talk about my day. You know, yes, so, you know I after 25, I was like, at that particular point, I was like, you know what? The things that I had planned for myself, they're not gonna happen the way I want, and I'm cool with it. So I've been cool with that. Like I've been outside of their realm of like at these ages I have to have. I don't know, it was just this weird feeling. It just came. And like I said, I felt so strange at first, but I was like, I gotta get it out. Cause if I don't right. get it out, it's gonna fall me. So I gotta say it to somebody. 
And my sister was like, well, you know, it's just like you want that, da, da, because you've been in, you know, you've been in like different long term relationships, la, la, la. And I was like, yeah, but this feeling was different. Like, it was like a feeling of, I don't know, I guess because I started, I'm starting to build my empire, I want my king there with me. Sharing it with. You know, like you want that person that's supposed to be there with you. I don't know. Sure. Like, I don't know. Lord, I don't know what you're doing. You know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> right. I don't know. You know what, I got them sidetracked, but if you can get them here to Houston. <laughs> if you can get them here to Houston. I don't, think, I don't think it's anything wrong with feeling that way because, you know, at the end of the day, we're human. You know, we were made from, you know, man's rib and we do want to have that companion. But I think we also think in our head, like, yes, I would love to have somebody to come home to, but then you have that, well, what if I date somebody and they be on this bullshit when I come home? Like, I'd rather just come home to myself, give me a glass of wine, turn on a little Anita Baker and just chill, burn some sage and woo some my thing out and take a bath and go to bed, you know? So I think it's a, it's a, it's kind of like, not a balance, but it's kind of like a what if, it's a scale. Like you're like, ooh, I really want to boo. And you have all these yeah. ideas of like me coming home and he has candles lit and we just sitting in the floor talking. Well, am I going to walk in on some bullshit? <laughs> right. Walk on some bullshit. Why you ain't cooking that bitch? I just got home. <laughs> exactly, you know? So, and I think a lot of men and women, they just feel mm -hmm. like, you know, I would rather just, point blank, go back. I would rather just have an entanglement. Somebody I can get my rocks off and I can come home or I can yeah. go over there and cuddle with them. I still can come home. I ain't got to deal with what they bring in this house, their energy, none of that. And I can go on by my business. And I think that's what Jada was trying to do, but she got caught up in her field. Uh, she got caught up in her field because she ain't want to hurt that young boy. But I want to go back to something that you said um, about like dudes, you know, you thinking that he like a great person, he want to have something, but he just want to have sex. So I said, I don't know if Anthony, um, <coughs> my production manager, Anthony, I sent him a video because we trying to like, you know, like jazz it up or whatever. And the video of this young lady and she's like, I'm sick of men. And she's like, I'm sick of men. She's like, because if you would just be honest with what you want, everybody would be fine and she just you know she just goes on and say like you know i gotta meet your <laughs> she's like i beat your ugly mom and your ugly uncles your ugly cousins and all this and she was like I'm I'm just family, what it is and i'm like if you want me to be your friend say keela let's be friends right, right. Don't, don't come at me with no other stuff don't call me no other names call me keela don't do nothing else we ain't gonna do nothing we can chit chat hey hi bye but don't have me flying out, doing this, doing that, walking around, we whatever. Couple, we doing couple stuff, but we only friends. And so yeah. I tell a lot of my guy friends that, and they really don't believe me. It is so much easier just to be up front and give up, give we as women, the ultimate, give, let us make the decision versus yeah. you making the decision for us. Because if you make it for us, we gonna be mad in the end because you gonna think all this all this shit is cool. We booed up and bade up, and then all of a sudden I look on Facebook and you like, boom, Mrs. Such and such, such such, and then I'm gonna have to come out come out the woodwork. When you can just say like, hey, I really enjoy your company. I'm not really looking for a relationship right now. Are you open to open dating? You do your thing, I do my thing. Occasionally we do each other, and let me make the decision if that's what I want, because at the end of the day, if something pops off, I can't blame nobody but me, because I made the decision to continue to mess with you. Exactly, that's all I've been trying to get you to see for so long, like stop. When you lie to me, I'm sorry y'all, excuse me, even cheater. I feel like when you lie to me, you think I'm dumb, and that mm -hmm. pisses me off, it rages me. Most definitely. That makes me Food with your period because like you think I'm some type of imbecile that you can run game on me. but that's not the case like if you say if this if you are somebody that I enjoy spending time with or whatever then we might be able to compromise right. but if, you know if you're lying to me and I'm thinking we're in a relationship but you got you done throw all this out the window and every time you got three 15 
15 babies over here. You got three girlfriends over there. Whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. Girl. Are you lying? Just say right. what it is, boo. Right. And you let me make the decision. Because in the end, it won't be. You can. I will feel better knowing that I can't be mad at you. Because yeah. you laid everything out on the table. And you gave me the, the choice to say, yeah, I wanna I wanna uh mess with whoop whoop or you know, nah, I'm not gonna put myself in that situation, you know, this and that. Because when you go in, we as women, we don't love softly. When we make that decision, granted, we're not trying to fall in love with you, but it's the little thing, it's simple things that women enjoy. We enjoy cuddling, we enjoy a text, how was your day? We enjoy, well, let's go walk around the park. We enjoy sometimes when we know we just need our back blowed out and you just there to do that. But at the end of the day, when you, you know, if you take that choice away from us, then we're mad because like you said, we feel like we're done and we didn't pour it. Once again, like you said, we have poured into somebody that's not going to pour back, pour back into us. That was my Mississippi accent, y'all. Pour. Y'all caught it. Pour <laughs> back into somebody that he, don't, he, he or she don't give a fuck about you. Like, it's an entanglement. It is what it is. Yeah. And it's so difficult to be like, like once I had that feeling, it was, it was around for like a month or something. And then I think COVID-19 came and it like went away. <laughs> yeah. And then I started thinking about like- COVID done put this like, in everybody's. 2020. 2020, 2020 put they put in everybody's. What Juvenile said for the 99 and the 2000 miles, they for the 2020. <laughs> right, right. Man. Yeah, it was, yeah. I think COVID has brought a lot of things to the table um, as far as like people's feelings and people's relationships. Like, uh, people don't have nowhere to hide now. Like, you can't go out or you can only go selected places. I don't know, because Texas on and popping though, baby. You know, they Nashville right behind you, though. Don't feel bad. But my thing is, like, with COVID, it has made a lot of people realize, like, dang, I wasted, like, five years with this dude? But you wasted five years with this dude or this chick because you were never at home until it was time to lay down or take a bath. Yeah. Or even in the case, if you was with that person, you know, you really care for that person or whatever, then you start yeah, thinking about, like, ooh, like, he got a bad attitude or she she want me to do everything you know it brings things to the table and it makes you reevaluate things so yeah I, I promise after that like after COVID-19 started I was like hmm like I I like my peace I don't want nobody that's gonna come in and like disrupt my peace um I don't know if anybody could live how I live uh not to say that I just I live like this crazy life but like yeah, but like your your piece is your piece. Yeah, because if you hear my house right now, it's, it's legit silent. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's silent so most of the time. To, uh, imagine being in a relationship where I work a lot because I work right. Kip. Yeah, Kip don't play. Kip don't play. <laughs> My bad, y'all. It says something. It's I don't know what is happening. It says something wrong on my internet. But yeah, like that's that's what one of the things that I had to really think about. I was like, I work a lot, and when I first moved here, I was at Kip damn near from sun up to sun down. Uh, there were times yeah. I, at least ten times that I didn't leave work till ten o'clock at night and had to be right back up and be at work at six to stand I up. Salute you. <laughs> so so like thinking about that, like I don't want anybody to like. Not saying I'm a celebrity or nothing, but I was like, shit, it would have to be somebody that would be really okay with living a life like that. And who, you have some yeah. of the dudes that have these needs, you know, oh, I need you to do this, or da da this, da da that. Or just point blank, period. Like, you work and you could tell them all day, or 
him or her, you can tell your significant other all day, hey, babe, I'm at work. You know, I'm trying to make sure I get these papers graded. I'm trying to get these exams in the, in the system or whatever like that. And you could be literally working your ass off to build an empire or, you know, have an entrepreneurship. And people think you out here fucking off the whole time. You are here trying to get money. Now, granted, I'm not saying everybody does that. But, like, society has really... I'm gonna be honest with y'all. So society has really fucked people up when it comes to what a person should look like, how a person's shape should be, what a person should drive, what a person should live in, how, what a person should make. Um, you know, we look at all of those, and then COVID just came in and bust everybody in the mouth. And now all of y'all that was driving BMWs and stuff like that, you can't pay your note. Or you stuck at home, whereas you had a way to get out to your entanglement, but now you're stuck at home and you got to deal with those issues that were a problem in your relationship. So, you know. I wish that we would just be able to like, I don't know. I'll be trying to be like a communicator. I remember when I first started dating, I was like, um, <laughs> I told the person, I was like, look, I'm going to be a virgin till I get married. Um, I don't believe in abuse. Like, I was like saying all this stuff because I had I saw so many like other... y'all. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying I had saw... strict. My mama was strict too, but it was it was more Akila saw her mama struggle with eight kids and then she saw her sisters and brothers struggle to raise kids too. So I didn't want a baby. So it was like, oh nah, I'm good. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm good on that though. I want a, I want a little critter that I can't take care of. That somebody I gotta have 15 people to help me support. Gotta get something from the government. No shade from none to the government. Somebody got some stamps, please send them to me. But I'm just saying in Tennessee too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, that, that's, that's where that morphed out of. And then I, I had saw, I also, I had this belief of, like, when you, sexual intercourse is the highest praise that you can give God. Because he told us to be fruitful and multiply. Yeah, that's true. So that's like the, the highest praise that you can give him. And while it is an enjoyment for you, <laughs> you're supposed to be multiplying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're releasing of yourself to someone consistently. And you got 15, 16 partners. Everybody got a piece of you. But then you want to come soul to me. Soul ties, baby. Soul well, ties. Soul ties. Now you got all these soul ties everywhere. And you expect Ke Keela to come clean you up, fill your wounds. Don't come to me empty-handed, boo-boo. No. I don't, I don't think when you have so many soul ties out there like that, like, there's always going to be a missing piece to that person. Because what you're searching for he or she left in the in another person. Mm -hmm. So like he like I most definitely understand where you're coming from with it. Like I ain't gonna say I was all holier than thou and oh I was gonna wait till I got married to have sex and this and this nigga baby. And I tell you I was strict, baby. Mm -mm. And when I found out what the wonderful pleasure of Dick was, baby, I was fucking out of both pants with But you have young and dumb moments. But at like Keela, <laughs> Keela had siblings. So she learned from her siblings. Me, I was the one that had to learn on my own because I'm an only child. So, you know, that's why like a lot of people like, you just, you ain't got no feels when it comes to sex. Mm -mm. Because if I can help the next person or the yeah. next young and dumb, to, that to, to wise them up to make them let them know it's okay to yeah. do whatever you gonna do but make sure you have this mind frame like point blank Akila shirt we sit on faces not in feelings especially when you're young when you be in your feelings so much but he told me he loved me but he did maybe he was telling all of us he loved us you understand exactly he was, exactly. You he he was just me? trying to get the Jordan fist you know, <laughs> so he can go on about his business. Like I'm, I'm telling you, y'all. If women our age could write books on how, because all this stuff that's going on now, believe it or not, we we're not that old. But it was going on back then. But people just didn't 
like we knew how to keep our mouths closed by different things because we knew like oh i really like this boy or i really like this girl but they're much older than me yeah like I, and we're from mississippi so this is something we've always seen but we've you know with us i want to say like we just we really didn't say nothing because like i said we was young and dumb and it was it was cute when an older guy looked at you and thought you was cute or it was cute when an older woman looked at you and thought you were handsome and things like that you like shit, i really got a chance out here you know not to do this and do that and the whole thing it trust me y'all i'm not gonna go down that path but it's a lesson learned just 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 trust me on that. a true lesson learned a true yeah, lesson learned <clears throat> I can remember this older guy um, standing out with my uncle and his friends at the yard. And at this particular time, I had lost a lot of weight. And I was walking, I was always, he was my favorite uncle, so I'd go over his house. I, I cannot remember for the life of me what this man said, but whatever it was he said, my uncle was ready to whoop his ass. Yeah, and, and I thought, and I think like when we're at that age, we think it's like, it's just cute because at that time, like, we're maybe between six between i want to say between 16 and 18 mm -hmm. but it's guys that's 22 25 28 that's looking at us and we're not looking at like oh shit, that's statutory rape like get really locked up like he can go to jail jail we looking like oh you know he fine as an older dude you know he can buy me whoop -de -whoop -whoop. yeah it ain't all this crap that could be i promise you it's not i'm gonna give you them older problems quick I, I do, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like you can't, it, it, people don't, it seems like we don't want to learn sometimes. And I feel, it's, I think it's a catch 22 because I feel like so much of the stuff I prided myself on learning from other people's mistakes. I feel like I also hindered myself too because I didn't get that burn. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't allow myself to go through that because I was like, oh nah, mm -mm, or whatever. And uh, I feel like it cost me some stuff. Do I regret my decisions? Hell no. Um, mm -hmm. If I <laughs> could go back and change anything, I would not. But <clears throat> I do, in retrospect, think back and be like, well, you know what, maybe if I had to be an X, Y, and Z, you know, such and such could have been different. But would I be who I am today? Would I love myself? Right. Uh, <laughs> if I had to make those particular comments. Yeah, cause so and people don't think about what they're jeopardizing. Most definitely. Um, I was one of the people I, I was about to it. risk it all. <laughs> I was about to risk it all, baby. I just knew this guy did. I was about to risk it all, baby. I ain't even know. Look, if my mama had fought me today, and y'all, my mama is not a fighter. I wouldn't even be mad at her. But y'all, when I tell y'all, I was about to risk it all over this boy. And to this day, we are still very good friends. Like when I tell y'all, he has pretty much steered me mentally, sexually, and physically. Like he's made me think of things and he's made me a better person versus like me being young and dumb. I, I still had young and dumb moments, but I had time where I can pull myself out. I'm like, is this really what you want to do? Like, is this really how you want to act? You know, like a lot of first time things were with him, um, you know, and to this day, we're still good friends. He's still telling me like, like, you know, I really want to move to Nashville and marry you up. Oh, no, mm -mm. Okay. Nope, you got too many soul ties and you got too many kids. <laughs> so would, would you date somebody with more than two kids? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes and no. Yes, if they were married for some years and it just didn't work out um, and their kids are probably between the ages of 10 and 18, yes. But if you just uh, I have been a community dick and you got like kids left, right, center, northeast, southwest, Santa Claus, North Pole, hell, South Pole. No, no ma'am. <laughs> no ma'am. Mm -mm. No ma'am. And I say that because 
when you date someone or marry someone with all of that coming to the table, you have to realize that it's not about you as one anymore because you have to learn those kids' personalities. You have to learn their mother's personalities. You have to make sure you get along and be, you know, that person. But then, shit, you gotta also look at, like, if he bags up on his child support, they coming for mine. You gotta pay that support. Well, I'm not well, ready. I don't <laughs> see it as a kid happened to somebody in my hometown where two parents just died and he was having babies on the list, right? And they started taking her check <laughs> because he was behind well, on his child support. Taxes, like, too. Don't throw that out. They take your taxes. And I, I square up because I don't get taxes like this. So when I get them, I'll be thankful for them. You hear me? You ain't finna take my, this, little, this little extra money that I got that we can put on the vacation with. We got to give it to the babies? And they ain't right. none of them. Now, that's the thing that I would be, I would be thinking about, y'all. Like, I, feel, I feel exactly actually how Tip feels. Like, I said, if it was some older kids and... I saw that you had clean break relationships with baby mamas. So right. Cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't need you to have a baby mama that's fresh that still thinks she got time to get back in. You know, I don't need that. I don't need that part. On the side that keep, you know, the X on the side that keep popping up. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I don't need that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I need to know where your head is at. Like, what is it that your plan is? Are you planning on building something? Like, I Thank God for my production manager. All I was trying to do was build a website where people could go purchase my books. And he was like, no, Miss Miles, you a brand, right? So if I'm building a brand out here and we together, this I let it You call me so I can build a brand too. Just want to put that out there. Shout out to the producer. <laughs> F.D. <-L> <laughs> He'll work with you, guys. He's a, he's a great, great, great production manager. When I say he, if I give him an idea, he runs with it. And that's, and that's what I'm looking for, you know, right. uh, in a relationship. Like, if you come to me and you tell me, like, my brother, we, we took my mom to Nebraska a little while ago. And I have an older brother, and he wants to drive trucks. And I was like, you know, as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, Carlos, let me tell you what we can do. I can go to broker school, and I can become the broker to get you the loans and, and some land for sale in Memphis, Tennessee right now. I can, we can get some land up there and we can take, you know, we could tow cars, we could do that, we could do whatever you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And he was looking at me like, you serious? I gotta, you know, I gotta get my driver's license first and stuff, all that. But I'm like, that's how I think. You tell me that's what you're getting ready to do. Now my wheels are turning and saying how we can make whatever it is, right? right. I don't want to be with a person where it's like, you say you're going to do this and then, I'll, then nothing happens. It's just like you said you were going to do it. That's it. Right. Um, so, right. And I think, like, that's an important part of a relationship, too. Like, you know, like, and it may come a time where your significant other has an idea or something like that. I don't want nobody going to tear my idea down or just like, oh, babe, that's nice. Okay, so what you cooking for them? Like, no, like, I'm trying to do something to set a legacy to set something in stone to set something so like we can pay some of these bills off or we can set up a trust fund for our kids or you know something like that or where we can put in a, a IRA or a 401k something where we can build like don't 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 tear my dream down because the one thing I've learned is what you tear down another person to help me build up so Prime example. I love Super. I don't know if you heard about Super, but Super, Super from the crack. Oh, Super Sin. Yeah. Super Sin. Yeah. So I love her. I love her personality because she is who she is. Um, yeah. So with Leah's dad, he, for some reason, they first broke up or whatever. And, you know, she was continuing to build her empire or whatever. And he came back and they got back together and stuff like that. But then you get caught cheating again. Granted, you didn't sleep with the girl. And then on top of that, not only did he do that, but Super helped him start his own empire. 
because you had dreams. She she booming off makeup. You got some nice clothing wear. You got nice apparel. So if you didn't help me build my dream up, me as a woman, as your woman, I'm gonna help you build yours up. Cause I, I didn't give up on you. But when you go out and do foolery like that, nah. Nah. <laughs> I was when she said what she said. I was like, "Come on, baby, ain't nobody got time to sit around and play with you, right? Because you don't already and, play with my life. Like if, right. if that wasn't the something wrong already, ain't nobody got time for that." And she said something so that stood out. She said, "Uh, I love him, but I love me more, and that's why I left." And I think when we get in in that mindset, like I can love you all day. And am I gonna be hurt if something happens with us? Of course. But I love me more. So. Like, we cool, I mean, we cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. We cool. I, I, it's really crazy to see, like, these people you think. It is, you know, everybody was like, oh, they was calling Will and Jada relationship goals. And I'm gonna be honest. I don't know the ins and outs of their relationship, but people can say what they want about like how Will was looking at the end of that table. The vibration that them people own, the way they sat there and held their conversation without having to call each other a bitch or a hoe, trice the motherfucker, cuss you out, whatever. Not saying that it didn't happen behind closed doors, because that's what Most you should do. You should fight and fuss or whatever behind closed doors. But sitting there as a unit, I don't care what you say as a unit sitting there and being able to hold that level of a conversation, them people vibrate too high. That's why the, the little people that are like, uh-uh, I would've been fighting. Like, what the fuck? What am I fighting for? She back. That happened four years ago. We done got past that. Y'all just hearing this. And the thing is, I, I think he has got past it, but he's still salty about it. Yeah, you can see he was still salty. Oh, yeah. And that brings, Brett, that brings up my point that even though it was four years ago, and he said they were separated. Think about how we got Jaden. I don't know how he got it. So I should look that up. Wait a minute. You know, Will was married to his oldest son, Mama. He said that down. Now I saw a red table talk with her and the woman that she said they were together. The so Sheree. That's what the that's what the first wife said. What well, they did, they read. They was together. They they was together. They probably they were legally together, mm. but Jade and this is before she even bought her the red table to the red table. Allegedly, she said that Sheree never liked Jada because because it, no Jada said she wouldn't date Will because Will was separated from his wife. So technically, he was still married. So, Will, you getting upset, and you was in a whole entanglement before you married Jada. I don't care if you no. were separated. Now, granted, they were separated, but at the same time, like, were y'all really separated? And then, like, on what level of the... Because y'all were separated, but y'all were still married. Y'all never got a divorce. We heard things in the newspaper or in the... In the y'all were still in the same house. Yeah. Y'all were doing all of this, and now it's like, you know, we were separated. And I, I get it. I guess that's part of the... I'ma be this is what we're gonna do real table talk. I done told him we're not getting divorced. You're gonna go on this side of the house and I'm going on this side of the house. And if you listen to August Al sing a new song, he says, uh, <laughs> he says something about um having keys to this and all this other stuff or whatever. So like he yeah, was standing against her. You know, in the space. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, had, he was he was standing in that guest house. Remind you now, he See, was sick. Cause at first, now she did tell the truth. She was like, so when it first started out, I was truly trying to help him because he was sickly. He was still trying to get his, you know, and 
let's let's be honest. August Alcina got some hits, you know. So she was trying to help him get that together. And what she was lacking from her husband, he was pouring. August was pouring into her. Whether it was a whether it was time, whether it was just listening to her, whether it was just giving her advice, like he was there when we were one there. Now, um, is it right? I mean, I'm not here to judge. But at the same time, you have to look at it like that's what people do. And granted, even though it's four years ago, we're still pissed. You know, but that's what people do when, like, stuff is not right. Because I believe, like, four years ago, they weren't talking about this shit like they was at a red table. No, I'm pretty sure it was all type of cuss words and stuff like that. But I think what they had to do was even even though we were still heard about it and you can look at Will's face in the pit in the video and you can still tell like I don't know if he had got him some good weed to get high or he had been crying or like or he was just real frustrated now you get real mad and your eyes be red and stuff like that mm -hmm. because this was probably something they was trying to hide and August put it out there but it ain't like people didn't know what to expect with it. Like that was spec that was speculations way before they brought this out. So um I think I, I think they did a good job Red Table, but it was a lot of unanswered questions. Like Jada didn't really add, answer the question like like how how deep were huh? Do you like like I don't Mm. At the end of the day, they, they they celebrities, but at the end of the day, we're all human. And the reason why I was like, you know, people like was talking about real face or whatever was because my old take on it, and I'm not, again, not taking no sides. She, when they were talking, they both said, she, we was like, I'm gonna get you back. And she was like, no, nah, you already done that. They done already done fucked up shit. I feel like the bad thing for any like popular people or whatever, your relationship or life is lived out in front of everybody. So everybody yeah. have a so, say. Everybody yeah. wanna tell you what you should or should not be doing or right. how you should heal from that. And the reason but that this I was is the thing, was, like when he said I'm gonna get you back and she said you already have. Like, come on now. Both of us separated. You doing your thing, I'm doing my thing. Trust me. But before that, they had already put out there what type of sexual relationship they had they were they were swingers mm -hmm. so you know who's to say that while they was doing swinger activities <laughs> back then that will fucked off with somebody jada didn't approve of like she, jada really wanted to square with this person and will did it because he really wanted her like we don't know what that meant and that's my whole thing like we don't know that but what we could see was that they portrayed that they healed from it or that they put out there like we worked through that and like my thing my takeaway from that was that i want like how i am that's why i am the way i am all my stuff is private you don't need to know my business who i'm dating or whatever right. if you happen to know who i'm dating that's cool when we break up you don't need to know that i ain't got to broadcast that facebook i gotta know that ain't nobody gotta know that it could but be, then that's where there. paparazzi and stuff come in but see people wouldn't have known it this is my thing why out of four years when August had all this stuff going on, why now? Why 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 bring it up now? You know, y'all done had plenty of interviews where it was you and Jada. Y'all was meant that was your mentor and she taught you so much about life and this and this and that. But then all of a sudden here come an interview. Yeah, uh I was blowing Jada back out. Like you couldn't say this for you. Why, why couldn't you say this four years ago when you was laid up in that guest house living the life? I'm just saying. Oh, oh, this Keisha. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about another Keisha. Keisha, hold on. We're finishing up one podcast and then we're going to uh, jump on to yours. We're getting ready to finish up this one. <laughs> My bad, Anthony. I thought you were talking about uh, this other Keisha that was. Supposed to be <laughs> this podcast. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> we do a two podcast back to back. Yeah, I totally get it. But we're down to the last four minutes. 
um i think we had fun what is something that you want you want to tell younger people and then one thing that you want to tell people in their late 20s 30s like what should we if we're single what should we be focusing on what should we do um so my teenagers to young 20s um don't let society make you feel like you have to live up to their expectations like whatever you want to do that's legal that can help you grow that can help you learn yourself more um i say go for it um i think um when we were younger we had that mentality of that was put in us oh you going to college or you gonna do this or you gonna run the family business you know and we wasn't able to what some of us wasn't able to accomplish our goals our dreams that we really wanted to accomplish so i would say just put your best foot forward and don't really live up to society expectations um for my mid-20s and 30 to late 30s uh I'm all about peace. Man, make sure, like, at the end of the day, like, we go through so much shit. Like, even as a, a, as Black people, we go through so much. Don't let the weight of the world fall on you. Don't take everybody's energy and make it your own. Um, focus on, on you, you know. Focus on what you want to achieve because at the end of the day, we think, you know, we we look back when we was 21, like, okay, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to be X, Y, and Z. It's okay not to have certain things at a certain age. That doesn't mean that you, it's delayed, it's not denied. Okay? So, pretty much, just take your time. I'm not saying coast through it, but, you know, put your best foot forward. But also find out that, you know, what new levels in life that you want to have, like, personally professionally um because like i said earlier a new when you turn a new age that creates a new level in life and you have to learn what you want to be or how you want to feel at 36 or 37 or 38 or 35 like you know and don't let society tell you like oh you 35 you supposed to have a house by now you supposed to have family by now um things like that man live your life bill for you so when that when god does bless you with that person or those materialistic things you know how to take care of them and you know how to handle them that's all i got for you <laughs> okay, thanks so much i just like y'all i reached out to like hey you want to do da 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 and she was yeah. super down for it and i'm excited to have you on and you I did was, a great interview gave some great uh Great knowledge and like I had fun. I did too. I'm not the first. I love when people get on here. And, just, <laughs> like, and you yeah. should um you and Anthony should somehow change uh, exchange information so you can find out like how he can be of assistance. I know that he would uh, be of a great help to you. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me. I had so much fun. Um, I hope you invite me back again. But if not, I really, really had fun. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. I will. I will. I will. Well, Virgil, we thank you all so much. And I'm not even going to say anything extra because I feel like Tiffany summed that up. Don't let society tell you who you feel be, who you want to be, live your life for you, and make sure that you're not making mistakes crazily and just enjoying life. Thank y'all so much and have a good night. Thank you.